the job of your father and well that uh, also influenced your music pretty much yeah so what do you think is the most important thing making music feeling yeah attaching the feeling to a sound okay I mean that's I think that's the reason why we all do it I mean the first time you hear a song that you love you get the feeling you know you don't think you don't think about it you just oh yeah it feels good you know and then so when you're talking about feeling, what is uh, so special about uh, live shows and how they, uh, how do they differ from like records in the studio? Well, you, I mean, live is live. You, you get the experience of the people standing right there, and they make the choice whether to accept you or not. You know, a CD. You give someone a CD, they can. Oh, I don't have time to listen to it. Or yeah, sure, today I love the CD. But the live is a, it's an experience. You know, you think of any first CD you ever bought, but you think of seeing it live for the first time. It's very different. Okay. So, uh, what do you, do you say? No, I agree. Uh, the the concert is the exchanging of energy back and forth with the crowd, and it makes it on a whole new level. It's I mean, why I do music is yeah. to to feel what the crowd's feeling and give it back to them, and do it through song, which is the coolest vessel to do it through. Okay, so you're speaking about feelings and how 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 you can correlate with the people, and how do the texts in your music appear and appear and how do you explain the correlation between texts and music like how do you, does it appear in your sound then are you asking like how we come about writing it or yeah uh, no how how do you, how do you make the text sound like they sound afterwards for melodic you mean melody okay um to be honest it, it, again it comes right back to feeling um if, if you start with a with a simple humming like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, when I come to you, and it just starts, and then the words can just kind of, that's how I do it at least. So do you find the text, um, do you find the words, or do you find the words, and afterwards you find the sound? Or? I think it, it, it's not always the same way, because okay. sometimes I'll have a line in my head, or, or he'll have a line in his head, and, uh, and then all of a sudden it, it unfolds into a song, like All You Need Is Love, how you came to write that song. Um, and sometimes it's just a groovy line or a groovy rift, and then the emotion attached with that groovy line or rift okay. produces these, these lyrics that match up with this emotion of the groove. Okay, cool. So if you could pick one book and one film to describe your music, which one would that be? Wow. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, one book. Stuart Little. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the reason why, I mean, when I was young, it was the only book I ever read as a kid. And uh, it was so playful, and, and it described a lot about the innocence of, I mean, a mouse who joins a family. It seems so stupid, but when you think about it, that's how I feel. I feel like a mouse in a world full of people, like, okay. and, I, and I'm trying to prove myself, you know? Yeah. They say, like, hey, this is who I am. So, yeah, it sounds funny, but that, that, that's a really good answer. Okay, and film, I don't know if you have any in mind, but... Um. I don't know, the Stuart Little live to action film? No. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm <laughs> kidding. I would say, it, that's a tough question, but yeah. off the top of my head, probably What Dreams May Come. Okay. Yeah. It features uh, Robin Williams and Cuba Gooding Jr. Oh, okay. And they, he paints a world in heaven. Okay. And he has to go and find his wife who she committed suicide, and he has to go and find her in hell to bring her back to heaven. Okay. And it's such a powerful message and a story of, of how we create our own realities. and. Okay. Yeah, I've never been asked that question, so I don't have any thoughts, but okay, great. that's it. So, um, how, how would you like your audience to describe your music, or your sound, and what is your um, intention of your music? It's an experience, and that's what I would like people to leave saying. I don't want people to come to a Makeshift Innocence show, and I don't want them to say show. I don't want them to say, hey, that was a good concert. I really would love people to come and say, what an experience. I want them to leave... I want them to come into the audience knowing nobody, but leaving knowing everybody. Okay, great. You know? Yeah, I know. Okay, so um, what is your special? What is so special about this song, All You Need Is Love, and um, despite winning a radio award? Do you mind if I answer this one? This is all you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all You Need Is Love was a song. I came out of nowhere. We were already doing the record. We were supposed to go into the studio the next day, and we were just practicing. Um, and we had our production team there and everyone was listening and kind of <laughs> kind of combing through the sound and um, I kept saying this line in my head and it was uh, I'm the ace of spades you're my king of hearts 
and I'd been battling for a long time with feelings for my mom. Like I, I didn't really know her as a kid. She kind of let me down. And then as an, coming into an adult, I didn't have her there at all. And um, I really wanted her to call me up and say sorry. And so for years and years, I didn't, I didn't talk to her, you know? I was waiting for her to say sorry, and she never did. So when the opportunity of the word started happening, the song started to write itself and what I learned in reading back what I was coming up with was that I was writing her letter of forgiveness you know and um, it was a way for me to reach out and touch her heart and it's still hard to talk about like it, you know, my mom is my mom you know like everybody looks at their mom like they're amazing and my mom is a drug addict so it's like I, I miss I miss her you know I still miss her you know and so yeah I, the song was to just say I forgive you, but for her. I, I didn't write the song as, hey mom, you forgive me. You know, I, I wrote it as, you can't do it yourself, so I'm going to say it out of your mouth. I'm going to put the words in your mouth, and I'm going to teach you how to say you're sorry to me, the way I need to hear it. And that's what happened. And the, the song goes through that struggle, back and forth. You know, the first opening lines are as if she's speaking. You know, it says, you say son, come and sit beside me, but there's a story to be found in every melody kind of say that I found my story in the song and the words and the melody and the feel and, and you know amazing that when you put the video up on YouTube and the first comment was her. Okay. You know, yeah, it's a, How did it feel? How did you feel when you just uh, yeah. it's it's still hard to talk about. Okay. You know it's, let's let's go to the next no, one. No, it's okay. good, it's good. It's just <coughs> that's that's what it's about. That's we're real people, you know. Okay. And that's that's what we talk about. So I think that your music gives you the opportunity to deal with your childhood and with your with all the bad issues. To make shift innocence. Yeah, That's what it is. So, how, how do you deal with critics, and how much does competition affect your music? The first competition was hard because you see other bands and you want to be successful and you want to put yourself out there and you kind of start that stepping stone process where you step on you know people to get where you have to go and then. You quickly realize that that's not right, especially for what you believe in. And at that point, there's a correlation between the two. You you, you mature, and you start to say, like, if somebody wants to be a critic, go ahead. But why show up to a concert and hate? Why, why listen to a record and hate it? You know what I mean? I know that you can go to a five-star restaurant that the top chefs in the world would say, this is the best food ever. And there's still somebody who can go there. You afraid of a little spider tail? That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Come, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Frank. Come on, Frank. So, you can go to a restaurant that's a five star restaurant and you can have some of the world's top chefs say that this is the best food. And you're going to still get some guy who walks in and says it's garbage. And that guy goes home and he makes noodles. And he's like, <laughs> the thing is, you learn that taste is so subjective. It's, it's particular to the person who's, who's criticizing. And usually what I find is if you can find something to criticize in something, most of the time you're criticizing something in yourself. That's a, that's a tough, uh, tough word, tough words. But yeah. perhaps you're right. Yeah, right. I think there's just reason to find good things. But then again, the other half is we're in an industry that's a business. And so if people have something to say, by all means, go ahead. Because if I believe it's true, thank you. Because I'm going to go and use it on my next record and maybe I'll take the advice. So, yeah. So, um, well, despite all the competition and all the critics, what is or what was the most important or defining moment on tour so far? This tour? Yes. Fan Mile in Berlin was oh. pretty freaking cool. Yeah, don't have this in Canada. <coughs> or we have similar things. Have you ever seen this? Yeah, on, on the scale that it was, I mean, people get that excited about hockey. Um, so we've had that kind of excitement surrounding that sport, but to see the uh, the enthusiasm, the camaraderie, the community that came out, to have Germany versus Germany, yes, is such a cool thing to be a part of. When was the last time? I mean, the thing is, we've experienced, I mean, the flooding is terrible, but it's like something that's never happened in lifetimes. Yeah. They said 600 years almost yeah. and since they've been able to, since it's been recorded or something. It's like, that's pretty insane, you know, and then to play Fan Mile, that's, Incredible. There's just, it's on a tour. Every day is a new experience. 
No. We're, we're Canadians in Germany. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay. You know? <laughs> so, but th this right here is the defining moment. Oh, okay. this, this is my favorite. Okay. okay. Uh, so if you could collaborate with a musician or with an artist, which one would that be? For me, I think it would be Michael Franti because the message that he has is so cool. It's it's love and peace. He's a very inspirational musician and, and songwriter. Um. To be honest, I would do. I would. I would like to hang around with Dustin Kensrue. He's a singer thrice. Okay. And uh, it's pretty pretty amazing what he does. So. So I could imagine to collaborate with both. Like for a record or a song. If I could sing with Dustin Kenzer, it'd be incredible. Yeah, but I, yeah, there's, I have a list in my head that's like 50 people long. So. <laughs> okay, it's so you were nominated for a Juno. Yeah. Um, in the category um, Reggae Recording of the Year. So what does it mean for you as musicians? We will forever have that. I mean, when yeah. we found out it was. That was a huge landmark for us, a huge milestone, because yes. we will forever, for the rest of the time we're musicians, be able to say, you know, we're Juno nominees, yeah. and it, it's all up from here. Um, it, it validates us in a way, you know, especially for that 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 area, like, to be white kids from Canada, <laughs> you know, being, record, being nominated for Reggae Recording of the Year. Yeah. It's like, that puts us there, like, you know, it, it, gives, us, it gives us eyes, like, people go, hey. There's maybe something real to this. Yeah, but it puts you also in a category, right? So, okay, so you don't care. No, it's like you got a Grammy nomination for best makeup. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> At least okay. it was for music, so I'm pumped. So, okay, so then what are your plans for 2013 and 2014 so far? If you can tell something. Yeah, I mean, just continuing is the biggest thing. I think... Um, there is a recipe to success, and it's very simple, and I don't mind sharing it. Don't give up. The thing is, when you don't give up, people start to know who you are. And when other people give up, you forget, and they forget, and they forget. And what happens is, the one who doesn't give up, just by process of elimination, just keeps going. And so, for the next coming years, like that's to keep finding the truth in what we're saying, and to find, you know, to make sure that we believe in the right thing, and to stay humbled, and come back to Germany, tour the world, mm -hmm. you know, just keep going. Okay, thank you for the interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the Eichhörnchen. <laughs> <laughs>